Okay, this uh sports talk with Rod. Today's topic would be delusion in sports. And we're talking about John Franklin the third. It was the uh last chance you star. So for those who for those who don't know, Last Chance You is a was a Netflix special that they had on um former Division I football athletes that for ever, whatever reasons had to transfer, whether it was eligibility issues, uh, you know, behavior issues, or where they just wasn't getting play time, uh, they transferred to junior colleges and they basically, you know, just followed them along their journey and whatever team that they went to. So it was like five or six seasons of it. Um, so the athlete in question now, John Franklin the third. I watched him on one of the uh, seasons. He went to. He started off at Florida State. Uh, was a quarterback. Some of his attributes are he's fast as hell. I think damn near like four two something. And um, he also is you know very quick. So I say that because that's going to be very detrimental in the rest of the topic. So. He started off at Florida State, quarterback. Didn't play at all. Okay. He, he transferred to Eastern Mississippi Community College, right? Which is in the middle of nowhere, I think it's Scuba, Mississippi. He, um, well, before I get into any of that, I watched this podcast called Raw Room, right? And they call it Raw Room because, you know, it's former NFL players, uh, you know they gonna say the real, the real side of how they feel and stuff. It's not no, it's not no commercial stuff. It's not no BS. Not no sugar down stuff, uh, watered down stuff or whatever that people might have on ESPN and stuff like that or whatever. Because they have to be politically correct. So I watched that. He's on there and he's talking or whatever, right? Okay. He every time he says something. Like, because I know somebody can think highly of themselves, but then you also have to be realistic. Uh, if you're not realistic with yourself, then life is going to show you a different outcome every time. So, keep in mind, so he's talking about his experiences uh, at, the, at the junior college and things like that. As they're talking about this, one question that gets asked is, do you think of... Uh, I think it was physical ability or technique matters, right? So, and I already knew what his answer was going to be. And his his physical, and he, he chose to go with, you know, his, his physical attributes or whatever is going to trump talent. I mean, it's going to trump technique and stuff. Okay. Before we get into that, my thing about that is, is um, I would give it a little bit more to technique because there's where people uh, fall short of greatness or even being even better than what they are because their technique isn't good. I know it's a different sport, but even talking about uh, even talking about uh, basketball, Tim Duncan, for instance. Tim Duncan is a Hall of Fame player, probably top 10 ever. He's not going to jump super high. He don't run super fast or nothing. But his mind... And he knows how to um, he knows how to maneuver and make plays based off his physical abilities. Does he have an understanding of himself and an understanding of his opponents and stuff like that, right? So, football players and what I tell and what I tell my friends or whatever, because most of these athletes. They are, you know, physically gifted or whatever, things like that or whatever, right? Whether they're really fast or can do other things that I just listed. But other players will always be around because those players' technique is great and they know how to make plays and do what they're supposed to do consistently. Even wide receiver-wise, right? Wide receiver-wise. I'm not going to go into ethnicities and colors and stuff like that or whatever, but there's usually a certain demographic that are at the wide receiver uh, position 
cornerback position, secondary position, running back position, stuff like that. Over right. But let's stay on wide receiver. Mainly that different demographic looks a certain way. And they're faster, stronger, can jump higher, things like that. But you still have this other demographic that kind of look like, you know, the West Welkers, the uh, the Amendolas from the Patriots, uh, who else? Um, Humphreys that play for the Raiders, little number 13. Those guys still play around because they run good routes. They have good, uh, just have good knowledge of the game and know how to get open and know how to, you know, catch the ball consistently. Players that are the majority of the demographic, they get into trouble and they're not in on every play because what gets them in trouble? A lot of times they're trying to be flashy, catch with one hand and stuff like that when they don't have to. So this person coming in behind them, we know he's going to for sure catch this punt at minimum. They know he's going to catch this punt on his punt return. He's not going to uh, run up under it, get a running start and muff it and he's not going to keep trying to peek so he don't have to uh, call a fair catch or something like that. They know he's going to catch it and take care of stuff. So I would say technique is way of a, a more detrimental thing than uh, than your physical talent or whatever, right? So back to him. He said physical talent or whatever because that's the only way he got on the field is because he's super fast. Keep in mind, he had, they wanted to come in and uh, they want him to come in and start right off the bat. Why not? You had a you had a junior college. You have a transfer from Florida State. Of course, you want him to start. But the quarterback that was already there, he was a decent little quarterback. He was accurate. He made plays. He could run a little bit. So of course, they try to get Franklin to start or whatever. But practice after practice, he could not throw the ball. I heard this term before. He couldn't hit the side of a barn, right? Like he was not accurate at all. So they had to pull him out of practices. Then the other quarterback come in who was there already. You know, he was very accurate, moving the ball downfield, everything. So before you know it, Franklin is on the bench. He's complaining and stuff this whole time. He's talking about how fast he is and all this other stuff. But that besides the point, you are a quarterback. Go to receiver or do something secondary if your only claim to fame is speed. You have to pass the ball. That is a quarterback. That's what a quarterback is for, to pass the ball first. If you can run, that's a plus. But that's not the only reason why you're there. So keep in mind, he's not telling himself this. They show the little behind the scenes stuff or whatever every time. Oh, the coach did, the coach did. Um, they don't want to play me, blah, blah, blah. No, they want to play you. You just can't throw. Who around you is pumping your head up and not critiquing you on what you need to improve on? Like, that's one of the hardest things in the world is to critique yourself because you have to do a self-evaluation and people don't like hearing bad things about themselves, even outside of sports. But you have to do this if you want to be a good player. So he always say he's the best player on the field and all this other stuff or whatever, like, dude, let it go. So. Fast forward. During the season, I forgot how many games go by. The starting quarterback gets hurt. Franklin was coming in. Other games before that, you know, doing little, you know, little running packages or whatever, wasn't being effective at all. The other quarterback is making plays and stuff. So he finally gets a start conveniently. I think it's after like the fifth or sixth game. He gets a start. Just so happened. Auburn come to the game, right? Because that's the school that's been in uh, in most talks with him. Auburn comes to the game. He starts. Keep in mind, until this point, he hasn't been doing anything, especially passing. So, this game, they play a team that's not really that good. I think he runs for like five or six touchdowns. After he ran for like the second or third touchdown, I think one of those touchdowns was like 60-some yards. You know, all, they, all the colleges need to see is you make a good play, okay, you sign. I think after the first or second touchdown, they left the stands already. They already, they, they saw what they wanted to see. So, 
next game goes on, even might have been a game after that. They playing good teams. He can't pass the ball for anything. They lose. He's complaining and stuff again, saying he's not being utilized right and all this other stuff. Not taking any accountability for himself. So, long story short, the season is over with. He ends up going to Auburn. Uh, once again, he does not start. He barely plays, you know, a couple of Wildcat packages or whatever. Still basically the same player. You take away that speed, he's a horrible player. Like, period. So, this was like, I want to say this was probably about four years ago after I, I saw them in a game or whatever. Like, he didn't get no action. I've been hearing his name pop up, you know, different NFL games every once every like once a year I hear his name they've been moving him to DB I guess he's been making practice squads and stuff like that or whatever and on the show they said that he won a Super Bowl with uh, the Bucks which Tom Brady was there I watched that game I watched <laughs> the Buccaneers that season I didn't hear his name one time so I'm guessing he was on a practice squad or whatever right which I'm not mad at him or whatever because she I, I, I would set up for the practice squad, right? But anyways, um, I guess they've been inviting him for practice squad stuff or whatever. He's being like the other team's fastest person, right? So, you know, he's talking, you know, NFL, NFL. I guess he's counting as an NFL player, whatever, on the show. And it just, it just really bothered me how delusional he was because to this day, he was even saying uh, from when they won that Super Bowl, that they should have put him in a game that the coach was talking about doing packages and stuff like that or whatever for him or whatever but like they for one they won the game two they had you in there doing punt returns and wide receiver stuff and even doing stuff at db like what makes you think you're good enough to be on that stage like that man like and it bothers me like who do you have around you that haven't told you this like you are a quarterback, and the only thing you can say is you faster than everybody. That's all you can say. Like, stop stop being like that. Like, you're never going to grow, and you're never going to get to where you are in your head. Not self-evaluating yourself. Like, get real, man. Like, and for the people in your circle, like, that's, like, that's y'all friend. That's y'all cousin. That's y'all whatever he is to you like y'all not telling him this like like it should make my head hurt because even as being a football player myself you know i'm an athlete or whatever in my in my in my golden days right like there's not much i never gave myself too much praise because i always thought i could i could be better right especially if i'm around somebody who's good don't let them be in the same position I'm gonna know the things that I need to improve on. I'm gonna watch myself on film. I'm gonna see things that I do wrong and things that I do right. I'm gonna learn more from the things that I do wrong though because eventually what I do wrong can keep me from getting to the next point. I've never heard this player say anything negative of himself, which I know you're not supposed to be negative, but you're supposed to be real. You are a football player. Even more than that, you're a human being. You're gonna mess up. There's some things you don't do right. You've never said this. You never took accountability on yourself. You always put it on somebody else. So with that being said, as a player, I have somebody around me. If I saw something good in any other player around me, I'm gonna say, oh, I could do that better. Can I do that as well? Okay, I need to improve that. We had, y'all know running back, I had uh, this player named OJ Hughes. Great, great, great high school running back. They even talked about him since he was in CYFL, right? Some people used to say, oh, you're better than him, you're better than him, all of this shit. I say right off the bat, we're two completely different players. We have two different skill sets or whatever. I know I don't think I was better than him because like I said uh, I think he ran harder than me he broke more tackles than me we was like the same speed things like that and on top of that um, when they moved the quarterback he could throw a little bit so I was like 
I don't think I'm the best player. That was that's not gonna do nothing for me but make me better because I'm gonna try to improve on the things that somebody does better than me. My partner Irvin, he came almost the same thing. He's basically I ain't, I ain't gonna compare them to whatever, but you know, Irvin, he could throw, he could run, he could shake you, he could run you over a little bit if you wanna actually have a, a little running back mentality and stuff like that, and he could play defense a little bit. I'm saying he's better than me too, for all those reasons. Um, his footwork was way better than mine, and he could throw way better than, you know, the other person I was talking about or whatever, so like, I. I'm not going to base myself off of other people, but I'm going to be real and I'm going to use it as a scale at times to improve. This player, like it's like he don't want to improve. He feels that he's the prototypical player that everybody should be. And he will never get to where he wants to be with that mindset. Like, like it, like it should make my head hurt listening to it, man, because I'm just thinking like, you have nobody around you who's telling you stuff so you can build on these things. Critique yourself a little bit. Like, come on, man. Like, your only claim to fame is being fast. And you have a super ego, which is worse, which is probably why you think like that or whatever. So, if there's people in his circle who have told him these things, then my apologies. But based off how he is, like, he didn't catch himself one time and doing these little talks and stuff or whatever like and I and circling back to I felt bad for the other quarterback or whatever because by the time he got back healthy and stuff I don't think they want to put him in a game or whatever because they did notice that you know it just I guess it just looked flashy when the other quarterback broke for uh, for long runs and stuff like that or whatever but they was trying their best to they was trying their best to keep him from playing. Like, they even got back to where they was doing a two-quarterback system or whatever. And every time Franklin got in the game, the quarterback, I mean, the, the plays was, the offense was stagnated or whatever. So, like I said, so, in his case, the physical abilities was better for him than over, you know, technique and stuff like that or whatever because that's the only way he got on the field and that kept the person who was more techni technically sound and more efficient at what he did at the quarterback position. That's the only thing that kept him off the field or whatever. So that's been this edition of Sports Talk with Rod. I'll have another one soon. I'm going to be talking about the combine. Um, probably touch on one of my Longhorns, uh, Xavier Worthy. Broke a combine record 4-2-1. That's crazy. So yeah, y'all look, that's been this edition of Sports Talk with Rod. I'll see y'all next time.